Today, Muslims, all Muslims, they forget their history. They forget the history of Islam. They forget the history of faith. They're not interested in the history of Islam. They're interested in the history of their own nationalities. But when it comes to Islamic history, they take nothing from it. Because in reality, the Muslims were made to forget their history. Because the pages of history now are filled with the betrayal and tyranny of those who want to hide it. But Muslims must know their history. If they want to take a single step forward, Muslims must know where they fell down. The British came to Sharif Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet ﷺ, the governor of the Haramain, and said, why are you being ruled by these Turks? Why don't you separate? We will make you into a new Khalifa. Fight against to these Ottomans. And so the Arabs rebelled against the Sultan. What was the intention of the British? To help the Arabs? It was to weaken the Ottomans. It was to weaken the Sultan. It was to crush Islam. It was to continue the Crusades. The Arabs became the pawns in somebody else's chess game. While the Arabs were fighting and betraying the Ottomans, the British, the French, the Russians and the Italians, they were dividing up the Arab lands. That rebellion made the Hadith of the Holy Prophet ﷺ come true when he said, Soon a time will come when the nations will gather against you, just as people gather around a feast. Someone asked, Will it be because we are small in number, Ya Rasulullah? He said, No, you will be in huge numbers, but you will be as useless as the scum on the sea. And Allah will remove the fear that your enemies used to have for you from their hearts, and He will place Al Wahn in your hearts. They asked, What is Al Wahn? Rasulullah said, Love of the dunya and hatred of death. They said to the Arabs, how come you are living under the ruling of a man who is not from amongst you? They listened until they became divided. And the Arabs, they stabbed the Khalifa in the back, letting the British and the French march into the lands of Islam. The armies of the Sultan were forced out of Damascus from Quds, while the Arabs welcomed the Crusaders with open arms. But as the cities fell one by one, there was one city that did not fall. There is one city where the Ottoman soldiers held on with their last drop of blood. Madinatul Munawara, the city of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. The Arab rebels made 130 attacks on the city of the Prophet. On one day, on just one day, the Arab rebels and their allies, they fired more than 300 bombs on the city of the Prophet. The Arab rebels and the British with Lawrence destroyed the Hejaz railway, cutting off the food and supplies of the Ottomans. One of the soldiers said, our food was cut off, so Allah sent us provisions from the sky. What was he talking about? Grasshoppers, locusts, started to fall into Medina. And Fahrezin Pasha told his soldiers, take these insects, cook them and eat them, or else you're going to die from starvation. And we have to live to protect the Prophet. Those Turks, those Ottoman Turks, those defenders of Medina, they starved. Even after the Ottoman Empire was forced to surrender in the war, Fahreddin Pasha refused to leave Medina. He stood up and said, I will never abandon you, Ya Rasulullah. And one day, he stood on the mimbar of Masjid al-Nabawi and he addressed the soldiers and said, O oh, soldiers, I call out to you I order you to defend him and his city to the last bullet and the last breath, regardless of the strength of the enemy. May Allah help us and may the prayers of Muhammad be with us. 
O soldiers of the heroic Turkish army, O Mehmet chicks, O little Muhammads, come forward and swear to me to honor your faith with the supreme sacrifice of your lives. And Sharif Hussein, who was honored by the Khalifa, Sharif Hussein, who betrayed Islam, sent a message to Fahreddin Pasha, ordering him to surrender. Fahreddin Pasha wrote a letter to Sharif Hussein, addressing him, saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, to the one who broke the power of Islam, caused bloodshed against the Muslims, put in danger the Khilafat and the Amirul Mu'minin, and exposed Islam to the dominations of the British. On Thursday night, the 14th of Zulhijjah, I was walking tired and exhausted from thinking about the defense of Medina when I found myself among unknown men working in a small area. Then I saw in front of me a man with a most beautiful face. It was Rasulullah His left arm was resting on his hip under his robe and he said to me in a protecting voice, follow me. I followed him two or three steps and woke up. I am now under the protection of Rasulullah He is my supreme commander. I am busying myself and strengthening the defenses, building roads and squares in Medina. Do not trouble me with your useless offers. Fahreddin Pasha kept his promise. He did not surrender Medina. In the end, some of his desperate men, they arrested him and took him by force out of the city. And the Arab rebels entered the city. For 12 days, they pillaged Medina. They stole, they desecrated, they disrespected, they destroyed. They broke the locks of more than 4,000 homes and they looted everything. And Sharif Hussein and his children, they were betrayed. 